Okay, this is Mario again with me on Microflight, and today is a Sunday, Easter Sunday, March uh, 27, I believe, and I decided to take a break from uh, my home and uh, come and do a little bit of flying here. I gotta go back and join my family again, but I, I thought I'd get out for a little while so that I can get some of this beautiful afternoon uh, weather and do some flying with these models that I've been working on. This is a new model that I showed this in a couple other videos, earlier videos. It's a little guy that uh, I designed for just for simplicity's sake. It uses the same Mia Microflight Easy 1.0 blades but it is a tractor design, very simplistic just a pot and boom basically. Uh, it does use a wire landing gear it's got one, the same motor as the, the, as the ones that we used on the Easy 1.0, but it is a tractor design. And I did this just uh, out of boredom. So I, you know, I mean, I like my Easy 1.0s. I like the, the way they fly for pushers. I, I really like the pusher design. Uh, the way it flies, flies more, in my opinion, more stable than, than some of these uh, tractor designs. But this little guy came up pretty stable. And I, I just did this just out of memory and just out of uh, some basic... Uh, rules that uh, I've learned, uh, you know, through experience uh, designing and flying these things for um, many years. So I whipped this uh, kind of in, in about an hour uh, or maybe even less. I think it was, it took me like 30 minutes to do this because I had all the parts done. I, the, the blades are, actually these blades are a little bit shorter. These, these are remnants of the longer pieces that I used to cut the 1.0s, the, the, the ones that I used for the 1.0. So these are remnants. They came out a little bit shorter, but they're, they're working with, with this particular model. Um, and uh, it's, uh, we'll see it in this video and, and also the vi previous videos that I've done. You know, this, this flew uh, really nice and very stable. So for something that's built, you know, in, in a matter of uh, minutes, uh, you know, it flew uh, quite well right off the bat. So we'll do that. It does have rudder. It's a rudder. It does not have elevator on this particular one. I, I'm still using the um, mixing on the rotor head. You got up and down. Oops, I have to reverse that. Good thing that I'm talking about this as I'm videotaping. It allows me to test some of these things. So let me go to my setup and go on reverse and reverse my elevator. Might need to reverse the aileron too. Yes, absolutely. So let me reverse my elevator. Up, left, right, there we go. Left, right, and of course the rudder, left and right. Let me put a little more rudder there. There we go. I had it on low rates. So right now I'm operating the uh, elevator on, on high rates just because I want a little more pitch and roll. I got it on low rates and that's about the ray angle that this works best in, in my hands, everybody's hand. Sensitivity to controlling these things is different so and I mentioned that in my other videos. It's got a little a little bent because I had this stored in a, amongst other models. I should not stack these things up but it's fine. Okay so let's give it a shot. I did this just for myself just to keep me from flying the same things. I mean I, I, I fly a lot of the uh, easy 1.0s and, and I've done a lot of videos. People have already seen those so this is just a, just to provide a, a different just a different uh, flavor, so to speak. As you can see, it's picking up quite nicely. Those rotors are that the Mia Microflight rotors. They work extremely, extremely well. And you know, I I don't have to say that too much. I mean, you can just watch my videos and see what happens here. I mean, they, they spin very, very well. And look at that. And that's what you want. You want a rotor that's going to spin very fluidly, very smooth, very smooth. Look how fast that's spinning. And that's going to keep you, you know, some of the stability. See what I'm talking about? Look how smooth that, that flies. Look at that. I bring it back against the wind. Uh, the battery doesn't feel like it's got too much 
power. I mean, I've been using these batteries for a while now, so they, they have gone through many, many cycles. With a fresh, brand new battery, that thing should be twice as uh, high. I'm almost near full throttle right now. Uh, but look, look how nice that flies. Very stable. And uh, very similar models. Let me land here and let me talk uh, what, what I want to say. Look how smooth those, that, that rotor is spinning. That should take off from the ground too. Just got to get it, get it to head straight into the wind. Look at that. <laughs> very smooth. Very easy. For something that I threw together in, in a matter of uh, minutes. Yeah, it's flying extremely well. Just needs a little more energy on that three cell battery. I think that's a two cell battery. I'll just pick up a little bit of height there and try to keep it at that height. It should go, should fly for a while that, at that height. I'm using a little bit of rudder and just right left roll elevator, a little bit of elevator there which controls the, the rotor. I was going to say that this model is uh, being a tractor is very similar to the ones produced by Hobby King, the Auto G's, which I've made uh, many upgrades for that, and I have been selling those upgrades for uh, uh, you know a couple years or more. But the biggest difference in in the, my designs is that you're not going to get a model that's going to betray you in in the roll. You fly the Hobby King, you get to a point high enough and you start trying to make a turn, that thing rolls. And on many instances, the model keeps rolling and you, you, you just can't control the model. Once, once it goes into a roll, you might as well just land it and uh, crash it. And that's how many of these crashes that are caught on video, I have to land, um, are uh, uh, depicted on some of these videos that, uh, that show the uh, Hobby King Auto G's doing that uh, interesting roll to a crash. I have made some uh, comments talking about that. The other thing with the Hobby King Auto G is that when you do a similar crash, when you land hard and crash land to, to what I just did here, you know, your blades have a tendency not to survive uh, because those blades are foam and they crack really easy either that or you'll end up breaking the uh, the flex plates that come with the auto G's so I mean look at this this is there's no there's no damage whatsoever here and I landed you know a little bit hard here but this is with every one of the models for me on microflight easy line and even these that are not supposed to be uh, kits yet but because they work so well, I might as well just turn these into kits and just offer them because they work very well. So, basically this is the, uh, it's just a fun model. And it's working very well. It's got the aluminum heads that I employ on my easy gyros. Same aluminum head, same universal joint, the way Mia Microflight does it and has been doing on, uh, on all the easy line auto gyros from the 1.0 and up to the 3.0 that we have. We so let's uh, let's go put a bigger battery. Hopefully, uh, this is a 500 milliamp power, and it's uh, it's going through a lot of cycles. So maybe if I can find a, a newer one, we can get a little more flight out of this. The afternoon is still uh, still young. The sun is about to set in. If I can get another flight quickly here, we can do that because I have two other models that I want to uh, videotape today. And just just for my sake, you know, this is my this is my my drug, so to speak. Yeah, I do like to do this for uh, just it, it relaxes me. Some people like to drink, some people like to smoke, some people like to uh, do other activities. To me, this is uh, this keeps me uh, 
in tune with uh, with myself, with nature sometimes, because you know we get to see some of the scenery. Not so much here, but sometimes we do this uh, in uh, by the mountains. We we'll get uh, a much better perspective of uh, of the world from um, up up high. Uh, you know, it also gives me an opportunity to uh, to breathe some fresh air because uh, most of the time I'm inside designing these things, and I, you know, everyone needs a break from that. So let's see what other batteries I have here. Unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't bring any smaller ones, so I think that's going to be it for this particular model. Yeah, these are these are a little bit bigger. I don't want to use that one. Yeah, these are 2.0s. Uh, this might this might this might fly. This model 1.6. Hmm. Let's try it. 1.6 is heavy, super heavy for this. No, no, I don't want I don't want to risk it. 1.6 is super heavy. Okay, so that's about it for this model. I was hoping to do a little more flying with it, but I guess not. Oh, what the heck. Let's put the same battery in and try to squeeze another little flight out of it. It should be able to do it. If I don't work the, the servos too much so not to drain the battery. So we'll just go for it. And this is attached just simply with a, with a rubber band here, nothing fancy. Um, like I was saying, you know, this model, I, I did it just for the pure fun of keeping myself entertained and busy with something other than the ones that I sell already that have been proven many, many times. I'll give it a quick spin like I do my other ones. Uh, I do have pre-rotators of my own that many of you have seen in some of my videos. But as you can see, I mean, I, I really use the, the pre-rotators because I... I'm more for efficiency and, and keeping things lightweight and just adding a pre-rotator just kind of adds a little more weight to it which is, you know sometimes it's 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 unnecessary when you can when you have a rotor that spins as easy as the Mia Microfly rotor spin I mean I did the pre-rotators mainly for the as, as an upgrade to uh, assist some of these these other auto gyros that we make upgrades for including our own but like I said you know I like to keep things nice and lightweight, and, and it's more efficient to me. This way, look look how smooth this rotor spins. I mean, I hope my video is catching this because you almost have to be present here or with with a good video it catches. Look look how smooth that is. I mean, I can't say enough of this because it's so smooth, and this is what allows the thing to to become a lifting surface really easy. See that? Hear that? And look at that! Straight. Needs a little up elevator, but you know we can control that. Come back. No, the battery's low. Okay. I guess I can get a couple more toss flights like that. I don't have enough juice in the battery, but you know I I think this this video transmits the, uh, the what, what I'm trying to transmit. I placed an order for some new batteries and I'm waiting for them to come in. So I guess next weekend it should be a nice also. It's getting hotter here in Arizona as the days go by. But we'll be certainly doing another video of this with a with a brand new battery. I just can't get over how, how nice these these little blades are spinning. It's got a little wobble here. Let me adjust the, the alignment here. Typically, I just do this by eyesight. You know, I just eye the the bolt with the center shaft, and that looks about right. That looks about right. About right. If you want to do this correctly, you tip it over and you make the leading edges parallel with the plate here, with the flex plate. See, I'm I'm a little bit off here by eye, eyeballing it. So this corrects that. Okay, so I'm perfect there. Give it a nice little spin. It should take up, you know, it should take off in this very mild breeze that we're having here. The flags, you know, they keep swaying a little bit on and off. So that wind is coming and going. Just got to wait for that wind to come. Catch this uh, rotor here. 
Ah, let's give it a nice spin. Man, once you give it a nice spin, it should pick up. Walk. Do a brisk walk with it. And toss it. Look at that. How more, how more easy and more simple can you, can you get? I don't think I can simplify this any further. This is as simple as it gets for a tractor design. And typically tractor designs, you know, they're, they're a little tricky. Like the Auto G has that nasty quality of going into a, into a roll and, and boom, that's it. All right, let's go back. The sun is going down, so I, I better take out my other models. So I do want to fly the uh, MT oh, Get that one. Uh, let's put this guy away. Unplug the battery. Flies on a on a 1.0 battery, but we can certainly fly that on a 1.3, 1.3 or 1.6. It's a little heavier, but it'll it'll do it. And I need my other radio here for that one. I need this guy. Okay, so this is the MTG, and you guys that have been following my my videos and subscribing to my YouTube channel, visiting my website, you will recognize this, this particular one right away because it's got a very unique uh, unique uh, profile shape. And I did this in profile. The original prototype was a profile, and then I went into a boxy construction. I did some videos of that, and I've come back to the profile for just for simplicity because I do want to offer this as a kit for someone that uh, is afraid of flying the other ones and uh, uh, is looking for something extremely, extremely durable and easy to, to put together. This is an old bolt and there's no glue in here whatsoever. You bolt and this took me about a, it took me about a half hour uh, and, and because you know I get a little meticulous and because it was the first time I was assembling this particular one with these materials that I'm using, it took me about a half hour to put it together. Uh, it uses the Mia Microflight Flex plates, same plates that we used, the same hubs, same idea, the aluminum uh, rotor heads that we employ on the, um, on the 1.1s and 1.25s and so on and so forth, the same one, but this one has been set up for uh, pitch or rather roll only. This one uses an elevator. And you'll see what, what this one does, as in my other videos that I already showed in, in previous times. But we'll give it a nice flight here. And battery attaches will vel Velcro to the side. It's almost like a park flyer foamy, you know, like the foamies. Uh, many of the foamies are, are, are the, the real simple foamies are built. It's built for the same reasons because you want something simple and flyable, something that you wanna, you don't wanna in invest too much time if you have to repair it. I don't, I don't think there's much to repair here. This thing is very tough, very durable. This is a you know very very lightweight uh, plastic that has been reinforced with carbon uh, reinforcements throughout the uh, the length of it, and so it's very sturdy. The landing gear is pretty sturdy. It's more sturdier than that than the Auto G. The Auto, the Auto G I think is about another four inches bigger or longer than the MTG here, um, but it does have a much stronger landing landing gear and much bigger wheels than the Auto G. It also has a you know a very efficient, very little but efficient motor. You'll see you'll see it in, in a minute here. So let's uh, bind the, the transmitter here to the receiver. 